Hi. Today we meet someone who thinks Doc Matrix is really... Ace. Hi, we're at the Greenwich Observatory, 22nd of August, 88, for Doc Matrix, and we've been lucky enough to run into Sophie Aldred. Sophie, what are you doing hanging about here? Well, I thought I'd come and do an interview with you. Oh, that, that was a very good idea, because Sophie's very interested in Doc Matrix and Greenwich. Why Greenwich? Well, I was born not far from here, and uh, I was just telling you just then that I did a project about Greenwich and the Royal Observatory when I was seven years old, and so I've got good connections with this area. And we also filmed a bit of uh, this season, 25, just down there. Down there, yes. Mm. Oh, I can see it well. Yes, well, a fan of Doctor Who as well as an actress, is that right? Ish, yes. Ish. I used to watch it when I was little, but I, I mean, I think most British children have watched Doctor Who at some time or another. I used to watch it with John Pertwee and, uh, and then Tom Oh, Baker. you and John Pertwee watched it together? Well, yes, that's... <laughs> no, when John Pertwee was in it. Okay, if you're a fan, what does Sid Rat stand for? Crikey, I don't know that one. I can't be that good a fan, can well, I? It's, well, it's just as well because I didn't know either. All oh, right. <laughs> yes. The character of Ace, how do you feel about it? I mean, look at this. Can we get, yes, a Dalek. You're also for wearing badges and things because mm. Ace already has a Fanderson badge. What connection is that with Sorry. you? Well, the Fanderson badge is in fact Sophie Aldred's Fanderson badge and I, I joined about five years ago, I suppose, when I was at Manchester University and I was doing my dissertation for my third year. I was allowed to do it on Gerry Anderson because I, I used to love Thunderbirds when I was little. And in fact, when I was about three, I thought I was Scott Tracy and I had to be called Scott and go running around in the I see, you had to do this uniform. bit. Yes, yes that's right. Yes, you had to go about in strings and, uh, and things. That's right. Oh, I see. But a uh, strange girl I was. I grew up and became a Fanderson member instead. <laughs> Uh, do you ever have any arguments or any disagreements about the character of Ace? Occasionally. I mean, I've been very fortunate because I've been allowed to do a lot with the character. Um, and once the initial um, character was created in Dragonfire, um, I've been able to take that character. And the writers have been brilliant this season and have given me lots of really good scripts to work from. And uh, the characters developed an awful lot the way I wanted it to. And I think, I mean, I think the writers have all been very keen on writing such a strong young female character for a start. And it's been quite exciting that way. And yes, I mean, if there have been things that I haven't thought have been right, like um, certain expressions or whatever, I've, I've said, oh, I don't think, I don't think I'd say that, you know. And, and they've said, well, what would you say? And in fact, the script editor Andrew Cartmel has got this. Uh, his new toy is this little sort of computer thing, and he he sits there for hours typing in words and expressions that Ace would use and kind of storylines and things like that. So whenever I come up with something, I go over to him and, and say, and he types it into his little computer thing. So it's been great, the, the input I've had. Well, talking of writers, it appears that the character of Ace is so far a little, getting controversial here, OTT. <laughs> um, how would you agree with this, Sophie? <laughs> Well, I think, I mean, it was, it's quite difficult to, to judge, I think. I, uh, funnily enough, I was watching Dragonfire last night. A friend wanted to see it, Mad Fool. And, uh, and I watched it, and it was quite odd to watch it in retrospect because, of course, I've now done six months more of Ace. And uh, that was the very first... I mean, for a start, it was the first time I'd been in a, t been in a television studio. And I was very... I was incredibly nervous about the whole thing. And I think it... It's very difficult to judge from a character's first appearance sometimes. I mean, I've had a good response, but yeah, you're right. I think, I mean, the character had to say all those things like Ace and Wicked and Brill a lot of times to establish it. And now that that character's been established, I think the writers have taken it and toned it down a bit and developed it an awful lot. I mean. Um, Ace isn't just going to go running around throwing Nitro 9 around and she's going to mellow. Wicked. She is she, going to mellow. She's going to mellow in places. Well, the character then, as it stands and as it's going to be, is it going to complement the character of Sylvester's Doctor? Yes, I mean, we've had a whale of a time this, this season. I mean, and the good thing is, of course, that we get on really, really well together. And I mean, I think that's, that shows on screen, but well, I hope it does. I mean people have said it, it does. Um, and I think, I think it's quite good that the character, Sylvester's Doctor is quite, um, 
it's quite energetic and hyperactive and I think Ace counteracts that slightly by uh, the kind of moaning teenager type. Um, uh, yeah, I think they go brilliantly together, but then I would, wouldn't I? <laughs> well, a biased you there from Sophie. Um, the show then is either developed or fermented. What do you think? Well, I fermented, that's the poetic approach coming out there. <laughs> Bit of both, really. Yes, no, I... said clearly. <laughs> No, I th it's certainly developed. I think, I, th I hope people would be quite surprised with this season. Um, as I said before, I mean, the scripts are, are, have been very good. And we've got Daleks and Cybermen, and, and, uh, and it's been very exciting. That, I mean, I've done a lot of my own stunts, for example, um, which has been good for me. I mean, I feel that I've developed as an actress through this season. And You're I not fermenting? I'm not fermenting, not yet. So, no. <laughs> Well, original question of the year, 1988. <laughs> Sophie, will you tell me, just me, there's no one else here, who your favourite doctor is? <laughs> That's an original one. Well, my favourite doctor is Sylvester McCoy. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. And perhaps your second favourite doctor, then. <laughs> Might be a simpler question. Well, I suppose, I mean, I think it's all very much tied up with nostalgia, because... I mean, John Pertwee was was my Doctor Who when I was when I was little, and that's the one that's the one I started watching. But I mean, I never it, owned a Doctor Who. Didn't you? You were lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. So I mean, that's the one I sort of grew up to know and love. And I remember being terribly disappointed when um, when they announced who was going to be the new Doctor Who, and it was Tom Baker, because I thought he's a Time Lord, he's not an actor, and uh, all my illusions about Doctor Who were shattered. Oh, I see. So, Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, the interview will become increasingly silly. Sophie, how do you feel about Green Gunge in <laughs> Doctor Who? Green Gunge? Yes. Oh, I, well, I've seen a lot of Green Gunge, I can tell you. Seen a lot in your time, have <laughs> yeah. you? Yes. I've seen Green Gunge, I've seen Red Gunge. Red Gunge? Yeah. You've in Doctor Who? Gunge. Yes, lots of Red Gunge. There is um, Red Gunge then. It's a pretty gungy season, really. And can it's you do any do. Doctor Who impressions, Sophie? Ah, yes, well... My first impression, no, is it, it, Sylvester always tends to get a bit um, hyperactive at times and he, he annoys directors by, in very tense moments of filming, coming up to going at them and going, what if, 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 what if we do this? And, and, uh, and generally annoys the director by uh, suggesting something that's completely inappropriate at the time. So that's, that wasn't very good, was it? I'm not very good at what to hear impressions. I think you better ask me something else. Yes, we'll, we'll get back to something semi-serious here. And there's been talk of a new producer for the show, for Doctor Who. What then, after all this chat, would a new producer bring to Doctor Who? What do you think he could bring to it? Well, it's, it's peculiar, this new producer story, because it, um, everything's very much under wraps. And I mean, I think Sylvester and I are the last people to hear about anything. I don't know whether there is a new producer, but... I mean, I think... I, think, I mean, John's been brilliant, and I mean, I think he, he's... He does his job wonderfully. I mean, I don't know anyone who could put up with some of the stick he's had, and, and he's brilliant at the organisation of it. He knows a lot about the history of it. I think it's going to be very, very hard for a new producer to assimilate all the history and background of Doctor Who, which, as every fan knows, I mean, there's just masses for a new producer to, to get to know. Um, I mean, John kind of, he, he grew up with Doctor Who and was a floor manager and all that kind of thing. I think a new producer is going to have a really tough job to to keep it running as smoothly as John has, certainly this season. Um, and it's it's going to be a shame if John does leave because they've managed to the relationship between the script editor and the producer this year, Andrew Cartmel and John Leslie Turner, has been particularly good. And I think that's going to be very back, yes. Yes. <laughs> had me worried there. Um, so it will be a very difficult job, but. As with anything, I mean, John's been doing it for a long, long time. He's obviously, you know, he feels that it's like his baby, but sooner or later that baby grows up and, and he's got to leave at some point. Um, and I think, in a way, he's, he wants to leave, you know, he, but uh, the BBC know they're onto a good thing because they're going to, you know, it's going to be pretty hard to train a new producer to, to know the background to Doctor Who. So it's a very tricky situation. I mean, I wouldn't like to be a new producer stepping in at this moment. But uh, we should see, anyway. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to get serious again, and we're going to have to stay serious because we're coming near the end. So, what news of Ace 
for season 26. Is she to stay on? Well, I very much hope so. I must say, when I, the first thing I did when I got my script was to look feverishly to the last page of the last script, and I'm glad to say she stays in the TARDIS. But, uh, yes, in fact, they're even now... Well, if this is what they were saying, if the new season of Doctor Who goes ahead, then Ace will be, will be in it. Um, however, the BBC being the, the, the wise people there, I mean, they just don't tell uh, John or whatever what's going to happen until it happens. So... I mean, Ace will be there, and in fact, even now, there are plans for scripts going ahead because you have to do that. Um, there's been storylines, and in fact, Andrew's been asking me the kind of things I'd like to do next season, which is wonderful. What are you going to do? Tell us. Well, I think I'd like to um, ride a big motorbike, because uh, I never got around to doing that. Um, oh, all sorts of exciting things. They've worked out that it's uh, actually cheaper to employ me than a stunt girl, so... Uh, oh, yes, so I, I can, see. I, that's, hence the fact I do all my own stunts. That's been great. So I'd like to do some more of that, things like sort of maybe a bit of hang gliding, or uh, canoeing, sailing. Well then, perhaps will there be a new companion? I'm not quite sure about that. I know there were plans to, to bring in a new companion at the end of uh, 25, but it hasn't happened um, for various reasons. It'd be nice to have another companion, except I'm a megalomaniac. No, that's not sure at all. But what kind of companion do you want? A um, boy or a, nice, a girl? A nice, handsome man, I think. <laughs> no, not really. Yes, not well, we're going to go off that. and get me an audition for Doctor Who now. <laughs> And we'll thank Sophie Alder very much. Thanks a lot, Sophie, thank for coming you. on to Doc Matrix. Thank you very much. And thanks, of course, again, once again, to the Metro Group for being so kind and lending us their equipment and the cameraman, Andy Gant. Could you wave to Andy, please? Thanks, thanks a lot, Andy. Andy. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.